Today's Journal Club is based upon an article published in last December's issue of Human Reproduction with Professor Berkmans as the senior author. Endometrial scratching in women with one failed IVF ICSI cycle, outcomes of a randomized controlled trial. Frank Berkmans is a gynecologist and professor in reproductive endo endocrinology and surgery at the University Medical Center Utrecht. Recently, he has started to combine his academic career with clinical work in the Center for Reproductive Medicine at the Tieklander Ziekenhuis in Permarend. He graduated from the Faculty of Medicine at the VU Medical Center Amsterdam in 1983, became consultant OBGYN in 1990, completed a fellowship in reproductive medicine at the VU Medical Center Amsterdam in 1993 and received his PhD degree in 1995. In October 2010, he was appointed professor at the University Medical Center in Utrecht. His scientific career has long been devoted to the field of female reproductive aging. Recent focus has moved towards the role of the endometrium in reproductive success. Within these fields of interest, he has obtained several grants from the Dutch Organization for Scientific Research and the Dutch College for Healthcare Insurance. He has held an associate editorship for human reproduction between 2005 and 2009. He is the former chairman of the Dutch Flemish Society for Studies on Fertility. He was a member of the Institutional Review Board, UMC Utrecht, between 2012 and 2014. He was chairman of the Department Board on Ethical Issues in Reproductive Medicine between 2012 and 2015. He was the coordinator of the board of the Special Interest Group in Reproductive Endocrinology of ESHRA between 2015 to 2017. He was chairman of the Pillar Reproductive Medicine of the Dutch Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology between 2015 and 2018 and he has published over 286 peer-reviewed scientific papers, contributed 36 book chapters, and has presented over 146 invited lectures at international meetings. So now it's over to you, Professor Brookmans. Well, thank you very much, um, Dr. Fleming, for um, this very nice introduction and, and um, mirroring my history in the past 20 years for me, which is very uh, fruitful. Um, I will try to share my screen with you all. And I first want to thank the um, organizing groups within Cooper Surgical for the opportunity to discuss our work uh, on the scratching trial with you. Um, first of all, uh, my disclosures, uh, very important to um, get this noted to you all. And secondly, the topic of this presentation, uh, which is in fact um, trying to resolve the big question whether scratching of the endometrium in our uh, ART population uh, will add real benefit uh, to our patients. And we probably all know that for many, many years, uh, we've been seeing um, small studies appear, which uh, held uh, large promises. And then the reviews came, uh, which shed serious doubt upon the real value of the scratching uh, process. <clears throat> and then finally, these um, reviews urged us all uh, to perform large, well-designed trials that really made a good comparison between scratching and standard care and reported um, preferably uh, on live birth, um, both in the subsequent cycle, but, but uh, more optimally in subsequent cycles. So a follow-up period of, of more than just one cycle. So having um, um, taken up this, um, this, well, this task or this, um, um, this uh, introduction to do, it, to do so, we started in the Netherlands our large scratch trial uh, designed to um, find out the real effect of scratching in those couples who had one 
full completed first cycle and then we're then more or less um, considered to be a a mild recurrent implantation failure group and then see whether scratching would alter their fate in subsequent treatment cycles um, this was a, a large trial that powered to identify a difference of eight percent in favor of the scratching group um, the inclusion criteria were quite mild almost uh, all couples could enter this trial um, whether uh, well under the condition that they had one completed first cycle there were a few exclusion criteria uh, mostly related, related to the um, condition where the, the uterus had some kind of uh, damage uh, like intracavitary pathology or leaking hydrosalpinges and of course we also um, excluded uh, couples who were in a donation program or in a PEGD program as these couples are not really um, thought to have an endometrium dysfunction problem. Um, the intervention was uh, a single scratch procedure uh, timed in the mid-luteal phase to take place and in some cases uh, in the um, in a previous um, oral contraceptive cycle uh, one week before interruption of the uh, oral contraceptive pre-medication and all um, participants uh, as doctors were instructed about the performance of the scratch using a pipel uh, biopsy catheter um, entering this catheter making a vacuum uh, in the straw and then re retract the catheter slowly with um, circulating movements um, according to a time period of two minutes and all uh, participating sites were instructed by a small video explaining how the procedure uh, should be done and in the control group uh, standard care was applied no sham procedures so it was a non-blinded study with the main outcome uh, focusing upon the uh, first fresh transfer cycle after the scratch but in the end also looking at a 12 months follow-up like I said, primary outcome, live birth after the first fresh uh, treatment after the scratch. And of course, we uh, also looked at other outcome parameters that you see listed here, which focus on the live birth after 12 months of follow-up. And then the um, typical need for Dutch studies is to perform a cost-effectiveness analysis to see whether the benefit of the patient uh, could be obtained without creating large additional costs. This is the um, um, flow diagram of the study. Uh, over a thousand couples were found eligible to participate and they were all approached. And you see that the majority indeed um, decided to um, enter the trial. So that the data that we have obtained for the Dutch situation really reflects um, the effects that we could expect in real day life. Um, over 900 were randomized. You see the randomization process. There were some exclusions um, that um, had to be done due to the fact that, for instance, having no hard copy of the in informed consent is a really pain in the brain for the monitors so once you have such problems you have to exclude those patients even from the intention to treat analysis then um, the two assigned groups uh, of course behaved uh, sometimes diff different from the um, intended uh, behavior in the scratch assigned group some did not undergo a scratch for not always known reasons and and the other way around um, those who were assigned for the control group sometimes had some naughty behavior and did manage to get a scratching procedure and that means that if you uh, take to, into account these um, these happenings uh, you will see that um, in the per protocol analy analysis uh, a little bit lower numbers 
of couples uh, could be compared uh, to know more about the the primary effect of the scratching and not uh, on the basis of an intention to treat analysis. The randomization uh, can be uh, looked at looked at by looking at the baseline um, data showing no differences in important factors like uh, female age, uh, infertility duration, um, the distribution of causes uh, uh, for the infertility, so that you could say that the randomization process had uh, been uh, carried out uh, successfully. What happened uh, with the um, randomized patients? This is again the number included. Uh, you see that some were lost to follow up, sometimes because there was intercurrent disease, sometimes because patients um, last minute refrained or had relation problems. And you can see that uh, in the end of the day, um, there are 453 and 445 couples in each of the arms that started the uh, second IVF cycle. 386 were going to the um, fresh ET, 368 to the fresh ET in the control group. And you can see that there is a small difference in this um, flow chart uh, between the scratch and the control group. Um, and you could say that in the scratch group, there was a little bit higher exposure to the real chance of getting pregnant. Uh, after the fresh transfer, uh, additionally, uh, a few of the participants underwent a cryotransfer transfer instead of a fresh transfer because of a freeze all strategy. So in the end, the comparison is 397 to 375. And even there, there is a small difference. And of course, this has been puzzling to us because this difference in exposure could be caused by the scratching. And if this is true, then you could say that the scratching creates some kind of uh, imbalance. On the other hand, we couldn't really guess why a scratching procedure would affect the flow uh, of doing the simulation, doing the pickup, creating embryos, and then failing to get a fresh or even a cryo uh, first transfer. So it's not easy to understand uh, how this small imbalance has come about. What you will see in the next in the in the in the, the next part of the presentation is that overall in the um, longer term follow-up, the balance between the number of exposure is quite good. So what happened after the um, second cycle was completed? Um, couples went on to a third, fourth, and fifth cycles with uh, the number of transfers that you see indicated here. And these are the basis for the um, long-term follow-up data. This is just to see um, whether the um, exposure in the end, in the long-term follow-up was um, in balance uh, between the two groups. Then you can see that the um, total number of fresh cycles on average was the same in the two groups and the total number of embryo transfers um, in the whole um, of the follow-up period was identical also. Creating the suggestion that the differences that we could observe in outcome, live birth, uh, cannot be really attributed to a difference in exposure. These are then um, the pregnancy outcomes. And this uh, graph, you shouldn't look at it because I think it's a false copy. Pregnancy outcomes, according to the intention to treat analysis uh, with the primary outcome, uh, live birth, fresh ET, you see a difference in uh, pregnancy rates, uh, although this difference is not statistically significant. And of course, this is caused by the fact that the difference is smaller than we anticipated when we designed the trial, so that this trial did not have sufficient power to prove that this um, difference is really um, true. It's almost true, but not completely true. If you then look at the other um, outcomes, like biochemical pregnancy loss, miscarriage, live birth after the uh, second full embryo transfer and the live birth after 12 months, you see that the differences that we observed in the beginning 
remain stable over time, so that in the end, a um, estimated risk difference of 5% in favor of the scratch group was observed. And again, this difference was too small uh, to become statistically significant. So these two items still highlight the um, transition from the um, primary outcome to the long-term outcome. Um, of course, there is um, the question again of the difference in exposure. I explained it previously. Uh, we cannot think of a reason why the scratching would have affected the um, difference or the, the difference in exposure to an embryo transfer because most of the embryo transfers that did not take place were due to a freeze-all strategy, or maybe in some cases, uh, a total lack of uh, transferable embryos, which could happen in older women. And then again, we could state that if you look at the long term, the exposure to um, fresh and um, all embryos um, transferred together were not clearly different between the groups. And then um, if you look at the, um, the intention to treat analysis compared to the uh, per protocol uh, analysis and the per protocol analysis with um, those who indeed made it to a transfer, you still see the same differences um, in favor of the scratch trial as we have previously uh, been demonstrating. So overall, the risk differences is about 5% both for the short and the long term. And the long term looks a little bit like this. Uh, you see that uh, much of the difference um, occurs in the beginning, but um, it's, it's a difference that is, um, it becomes remained, it's, it's become stable over time. There's no clear sign that the control group, uh, due to differences in exposures in the beginning, um, um, takes up to, um, um, to um, regain um, the, um, um, to overcome the, the difference in, in, in life birth rates. So it means that um, uh, with a, an equal exposure over time, um, the difference in the pregnancy rates that we observed um, must be, um, well, must have been contributed by the performing of the scratch. So what is the summary then of what we observed in this trial? Um, if you uh, perform an individual scratching in the middle of phase, you see a um, 4.6 um, risk difference in benefit of the scratching group after the fresh cycle and a 5.1 percent point risk difference in the period after 12 months. And of course, the big question then is, um, does endometrial scratching really improve live birth rates? And we must um, be honest that from our trial, we cannot fully claim that this is true. At the same time, we are part of a, a, a set of two large trials that have been uh, recently published. Um, the other trial is the so-called PIP trial, uh, an international uh, multi-site trial where the um, scratching was allowed to take place both in the early follicular phase as well as in the mid-luteal phase of the cycle. So the timing of the scratch was left um, to the um, uh, performing doctor. And one other important note uh, that can be made from this trial is that the, the the, the number of eligibles to the number of participants was clearly different from our trial. In this trial, many, many of the eligible participants didn't want to take place um, because they preferred to undergo scratching, so that only half of the eligible couples indeed entered this comparative study. Um, and there is a third trial. Um, this is, um, I think, at the moment submitted for uh, publication. Um, we have been in contact with this group and they observed a risk difference of 1.3% in favor of the scratching group. Um, so that with these three large trials that were asked for by the executors of the 
previous meta-analysis, uh, these three trials together um, still create a picture of reasonable doubt about does it really help. What is true is that these trials all differ in the population and in the scratch timing. Well, what to do? We're not sure whether it works. And if there is an effect, it could be smaller than we previously have anticipated. And happily after, currently we are very busy with um, performing an individual patient's data analysis of all the trials um, published on endometrial scratching um, under the condition that these trial groups were willing uh, to share their data in this collaboration. And of course, um, many of them uh, did, um, some did not, uh, in spite of many efforts to get them involved. But from the data that we obtained, you see here the studies listed, we were able to do two things. One is um, to uh, combine all the data, and two is to look deeply into the quality items of all these trials. And we could say that the data set that has been compiled from this really shows uh, re reliable data. Um, uh, and from all these data together, we see a small but significant effect on the chance of a live birth, creating the um, small or cautious conclusion that scratching may be beneficial um, and that we may uh, alter um, um, the knowledge into a yes. Still, we have fairly uh, lengthy discussions within this group on the meaning of the data. Uh, we are still looking for a consensus of what the message based on these data will be. And this is important because a recent update of the Cochrane uh, review um, uh, more or less failed to show a difference. There was a difference, but it was not statistically significant. significant. And we are still in the debate uh, who we should put our beliefs on, on this IPD or on the conventional meta-analysis. So work to be continued. And thereby, I thank you for your attention and I'm very willing to uh, take questions. Thank you very much.